Hello and welcome to this week's video blog on the law. This week we'll discuss some of the reasons, some understandable, some much less so, and some completely bizarre, that have driven people to disinherit their families. As we've touched on in other blogs, the law in BC requires that a will discharge the willmaker's moral duty to make an adequate provision for their spouse and for their children. And this law is the most generous in Canada. To overcome this moral duty and disinherit a spouse or a child in a way that the courts won't interfere with, the willmaker needs to have both valid and rational reasons. This means the reasons have to be both true and logically connected to the disinheritance. Untrue reasons stated for disinheritance tend to have some common themes that return again and again, such as imagined drug addictions or criminal histories, uh, parents' mistaken belief that a child is in fact very wealthy, or even conspiracies to steal the willmaker's possessions. Less common, however, were the cases where the willmaker said their estate needed to be left to other needy relatives, who turned out simply not to exist, or where a father believed that his children had conspired to pump poison gas into his apartment. Beyond being true or not, the reasons also have to be rational. The mother whose son grew marijuana on her property, leading to her own arrest and conviction for drug possession, was found to have had rational reasons for leaving him out of her estate. On the other hand, the mother who disinherited her son because he failed to fix the fridge in her apartment was not held to have had rational reasons. There are also reasons for disinheriting a family member that may be both valid and have a rational connection to disinheritance that have been found to be simply inconsistent with modern Canadian social values. The courts, for example, will clearly not uphold the wills of parents who disinherit their children for sexual orientation. There are also some cultural norms that will not be upheld either such as the custom of providing only for sons to the exclusion of daughters. Lastly, a child who marries someone of a different race, religion, or nationality can still expect to share in their parents' estate. We know the issue of testamentary freedom always gets our viewers thinking, so I invite you to share your thoughts or your own stories of strange disinheritance uh, in the comments. I hope you learned something about the law from the blog today, and please feel free to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive notice of our future weekly video blogs on the law. Thank you.